Hi everyone. So today I want to talk a little bit about some ways you can use large language models. So far in our guide, we have spoken about basics of prompting, getting the right prompt elements, and also we covered some general tips for designing prompts. In this particular section, the goal is to provide you examples or more concrete examples of what I refer to as foundational tasks that these models are trained to perform really well. And from a lot of these tasks, we are now using, all of us like developers are using these models to create even more complex workflows. So these are very important tasks to be familiar with when working with large language models. I think this is a great way to start to experiment and explore language models to understand what these models are capable of doing. Uh, the, the thing about working with large language models is that I think it's important for you to test out, right? What are the capabilities and what are not the capabilities to see if it's really suitable for your application. So this is something I love teaching when we teach our course on prompt engineering for LLMs. I love to talk about this. The reason is because again, as I mentioned, if you understand these basic ideas and basic ways you can use these large, large language models, it could potentially inspire you to think more deeply about what else can you do with these models for your real world use cases. So we're gonna go through a few of these just to kind of talk more about what you can do with these models and how you might be able to prompt these models and perform some of these tasks. And we will use the playground for, for our examples. So let's start with that. So let, let's do something like text summarization. And I'm gonna use a very basic example of text summarization here um, and just show you. So let's say I want a model to explain to me a concept, right? So it's a very, very simple concept. I'm gonna actually just add it here. Um, again, I'm using the playground and um, there's nothing to special about the way I'm prompting. I'm just asking to explain antibiotics. I'm using the right keyword here. And then I just use this indicator for the model to just output the answer because that's what I expect the model to be performing. So it actually gave me a summary, right? So this is not a like a specific prompt. It's not meant to be short. This is the first iteration of this prompt and there's nothing too special about it, but just wanted to show you how powerful these models are at some things like explaining concepts and so on that you may use in other more complex applications. So that's the text summarization. And there are more advanced ways you can do text sum summarization. Um, I'm actually gonna show you here another one. So I'm gonna take this and then I'm gonna just paste it in a system prompt, right? Typically I start with a system prompt, I, uh, system role. I really don't I really need to get too complex with the prompting here because I really wanna show you the capabilities more than anything. So now I provided the model some information about antibiotics, and then I asked it to explain the above in one sentence. So you can think of it, of this as an input, and you, know, and you can also add more information about antibiotics as context, but this is very basic. We wanted to keep it very basic just to show you the task of text summarization. And then I said, explain the above in one sentence. And the thing about this is that these balls are trained to perform this task really well. So you have, you should have an expectation that they should perform really well. And you probably don't need to put a lot of effort into like prompting these models to do something like text summarization because they're expected to be able to do these tasks really well. One thing that you may observe here is that I'm actually asking the model to explain the above in one sentence, but I could also say to the model or prompt the model in a different way. I could say something like, explain the below paragraph in one sentence. I could also do that, right? And this model will understand, it's very robust in an understanding that this particular task, it's still asking for text summarization, but notice that I'm asking it at the top instead of at the bottom. And again, it does perform the task relatively well. And the difference here is the positioning of the instruction. And as we have been explaining in our previous guides, it's beneficial if you add the instruction towards the top of your prompt. So our instruction is gonna be this one, and this is just gonna be the input, right? 
And this is great because you you can basically implement some type of standardization in the way you prompt these models, and it's very useful. There is also a lot of research around large language models that explain that it's better to actually put instructions at the top because these language models, they tend to pay more attention to things that are towards the end or towards the beginning of the input data, right? The prompt that you're providing it. So that's just a tip right there um, that I can talk about in this particular um, example. And we have another one here is information structure. And this is one of my favorite ways of using large language models. Actually, we use them a lot like for information extraction for a variety of use cases and clients that we work with. So I want to take this and I want to show you as well how this works. Again, I'm just copying and I'm, I'm, I'm pasting right, right into my system prompt. This is how you can basically start to experimenting with some of the prompts that we share in our guide. And here I have a similar thing, right? So I have this piece of context here. Right, I haven't labeled it that this is a context. This is this is something that you can improve, right, for readability purposes. Um, but then at the bottom here, I have an instruction that says, "Mention the large language model based product mentioned in the paragraph above." Right, so there is some kind of product here. And if you look at our guide, right, the output is something like this. This is the expected output, which is going to be an explanation, and then it says, "Okay, it's going to be ChatGPT." Right, so ChatGPT is really the product here. Um, but I could also, again, and I'll show you here, I could take this, right? And I should expect to get the same output. These models are getting really well. They understand regardless if the instruction is at the top or at the bottom. Um, where these models actually perform poorly is when these instructions are layered one on top of each other, or you may have an instruction, say, in the middle of a prompt. And sometimes you end up in those situations with your prompts because you are probably designing a lot of logic and you're instructing the model to behave in certain ways or steering the model. And you may end up with a bunch of instructions and some instructions that are in the middle of that prompt will probably be uh, completely skipped by this model. And that's something that these models are um, kind of failing at. And, and we're improving them, obviously, especially for, the, especially for bigger, models and models that can handle long context, we really need them to be able to perform every bit of instruction and understand what we are asking them to do. Um, let me just hit submit here and I'm show you here what. So we got ChatGPT, right? And you, know, you can get more creative here and you can tell the model that you want the output to be in a specific format. You don't just want the name of the product, but you want it in, you know, maybe in a sentence or a complete sentence. You can also do that. That's something you can do. Um, you know, you can either do it towards the bottom here, just instruct them all to do it, and then you can also do it at the top. But this is fascinating that these models can do this. It basically picks up the information from this. And, you know, you can continue testing this further if you like. You can add more of these products, right? You can add chat GPT, you can add cloud, you can continue testing to see how far you can take uh, these models for this capability, which is very useful. And it's one of the more common ways in how we use large language models. We talk about information instruction in our course a lot. This is one of the areas where we go deep and we cover very advanced use cases if you're interested in that. And one more I wanted to do here is uh, question answering. There are a bunch of them, text classification and so on. Uh, we covered them in the course extensively, but here I want to focus on question answering is our last example. So I'm going to take this. And again, for each task, notice that I'm providing some insight because each task is doing something different and there are different ways on how you might improve that task, right? Sometimes it's about how you're asking, sometimes it's where the instruction is, uh, sometimes it's how you're passing that data, right? We're not talking about that yet here. This is why prompt engineering is kind of really an important skill because that's you know, that's where you will learn where to put data efficiently, right? Where to, uh, how to structure your prompt, how to um, kind of instruct your model to perform a, a specific task with a specific tone, maybe a specific structure that you want. There's just so many things that you may want from a task. And what I'm covering here is really simple, I must admit. But again, this is why we cover this topic because of the importance of kind of optimizing your prompt and leveraging these models in the right way. All right, so for this one, notice that I have a context, right? So I actually took uh, this 
blurb, I think it's an abstract or a piece of abstract from a nature paper. This is a scientific paper talking about um, some drug or something like that. And what I wanted to do is I actually provided this model sum instruction here at the top. So there are some expectation um, about this model. Notice that this is a question answering task, but I've actually done a bit more work here to refine the behavior that I want from the system because it matters for my application. And this is what I want to inspire developers and researchers working with these models, right? Or even if you're just using it for your personal use, think about all the things that you can do with these models, like these basic tasks such as you know, doing analysis, right? Doing text summarization and how you can combine them. So here what I'm doing is I'm instructing this model, uh, answer the question based on the context below, keep the answer short and concise. You can literally instruct the model to do that and then respond unsure about answer if not sure about the answer. So how is this useful? Where I'm actually steering the model and telling it the logic and telling it to follow this instruction. Well, it's useful in the context of say something like a chatbot. If this were a chatbot, that's actually pretty useful. So you can imagine that maybe I'm interacting with some kind of chatbot that can help me you know, study about you know, these drugs or study about some kind of field like biology or something like that. You know, it's really useful to be able to instruct the model and steer the model towards the type of responses that you want the model to respond for your users. So that's what I'm doing here. So, and then there is the question, obviously, question, what was OK, OK T3 originally source from? And then the answer will be here. Now, look at how I've structured this, right? Just take a second here to look at this. Now, if this was a standalone task, right, I could easily just test it here. Um, OK. And, and mice is the right answer, by the way. So you can infer that mice is the correct answer. But imagine that you were developing a chatbot. So how do you go from a very standard prompt like this and design something that would work more for a chatbot? This is the entire point of the playground, that you have these roles, like system role, assistant role, and user role, where you can actually structure your prompt, right? So that it can support something like a chatbot interface or something like that for your application. So how do I do that? Well, you know, for this one, as I mentioned, maybe it was some kind of analysis that I was doing, right? And, and I have a bunch of questions that I want the model to answer, but this is a very standalone task in the sense that, you know, th th this doesn't have an interface for users. It's not, it's not meant to be consumed, right? It's meant just for me, the researcher that's interested in the model, helping me answer some questions about some papers or some research. So how can I do that? Um, I can go here and I can take this. Actually, actually, I'll take both of these and then I'm going to put it here as part of user. And then because I've structured it this way, this model understands that the assistant will now just give me the answer to the question. So I'm just submit here and look at it. It's, it's my, so it's the same response. So I've just structured it a bit different. And because I've structured it a bit different, right? This model is able to infer that, okay, you know, at least in this setting, it looks like a chatbot setting, and now it's going to have a dialogue. And I can continue asking questions, questions essentially. Obviously, the way we're interacting with the model is a bit different from the way the user would interact with the model. And what I mean by that is here I've added these indicators, but really what the user was asking is this question, right? So that you can imagine there is like a chat interface, the user is asking a question. Uh, we get the question, we structure the question further to be something like this because we know that these models can take this structure uh, you know, to their advantage because we know we're going to get more reliable responses. So we need to be able to separate things here, right? We need to be able to separate what's the, the input from the user, um, how we have structured this, and how we have leveraged the user role, and how we have leveraged the assistant role here and the assistant role as well. So there are a couple of things that I said here. Hopefully it was clear, but hopefully that inspires you to understand why it's important to understand these basic, you know, these basic tasks because they can evolve into something more complex, which a lot of people are actually leveraging LLMs for, right? They're building chatbots, they're interacting with, you know, external tools, and they're interacting with their enterprise data, they're interacting with even their personal files on the computer. So they're different efficient ways or effective ways on how you can interact with these models. And there's going to be some effort in how you design your prompt to be able to get 
uh, good results. So that was the whole point of this video. Hopefully you got something from it. And if you have any questions, again, as I mentioned, just leave them in the comments in the YouTube page. And I will be doing more of these. So it helps if you like and share the videos as well. Um, and you subscribe to the page, that helps a lot. So that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much for listening again and see you in the next one.